Management of end of life of electronics is a new challenge. One reason is the rapid evolution of the technology. While new electronic products like computers and cell phones have as long a potential lifespan as traditional white goods, in practice they are considered obsolete very soon and replaced with new models. This, uh, this disc uh, these discards are RE waste. A second distinction is that the environmental intensity of manufacturing electronics is comparatively high. For example, it takes four times more energy to make a desktop computer than it consumes while plugged in in home. In contrast, a refrigerator, most of the energy is used in operation. Manufacturing is a small share. Surprisingly, a computer's annual energy costs are higher than for, than for a refrigerator if one includes manufacturing. Extending uh, electronics lifespan thus could be an important strategy to mitigate environmental impacts. Uh, this does not mean that we should try to make do with slide rules or pocket calculators. Rather, robust markets for used uh, electronics can help ensure that function are well matched with the needs and wants of users. A third challenge is how to manage substances of concern in electronics such as lead and brominated flame retardants. Much of the environmental concern concerning e-waste is about the potential for lead and other heavy metals to leach from e-waste in landfills. Circuit boards and cathode ray tube tubes are classified as hazardous waste according to, because they fail, EPA's TCLP leaching risk desk. My colleagues and I at Arizona State University recently reviewed the literature and our conclusion was that the risk of leaching from sanitary landfills is very small, if not negligible. The main reasons for this are, one, the TCBL test is considerably more aggressive than the leaching that actually occurs in landfills, and two, modern landfills have control systems to contain toxics that may leach out. In contrast, there is as yet no evidence that modern recycling of circuit boards and CRTs is environmentally preferable to, uh, to landfilling. A fourth challenge is that the reuse and recycling of electronics is often a net cost uh, in the United States, but in the developing world is a profitable business because the developing world has lower labor costs, higher demand for reused products and parts, and lower environmental protection. The result, this results in a substantial export of of life electronics from the U.S. and other developed countries to developing countries. The electronics reuse recycling industry is a double-edged sword for the developing world. On one hand, reuse markets provides access to technology which people could otherwise not afford. Low-cost computers and cell phones in particular enhance uh, education and, and economic development. Uh, the recycling industry, the reuse and recycling industry, employs thousands of people. On the other hand, the recycling of electronics is often done in developing, in developing countries via an informal industry. Uh, it is, in my opinion, by far the most serious environmental problem associated with end of life electronics. Yet there is as yet little action taken to improve health and safety conditions in this industry. I believe that it is important we work towards electronic product solutions and policies which aim at triple bottom line solutions, environmental, economic, and social benefits. While it is tempting to focus only on environmental issues, some environmental options have negative economic and social impacts for disadvantaged groups, leading to complex ethical choices. We need to understand the trade-offs between different options. An important part of moving forward is understanding what is really going on with reuse and recycling. One reason for the current lack of information is that reuse and recycling activities do not have their own industry or commodity codes and thus are invisible to conventional statistics. Considering product design, alternate materials using and developing alternate materials is an important strategy, but it is important to note that even a computer free of toxic substances would still be dangerous to recycle informally. Many of the toxics are generated or used in the recycling processes themselves. The design of information systems to, for products is much less discussed, but I think one of the major untapped opportunities to improve use and recycling. One idea is to place a radio frequency identification device into a computer to act as a black box, periodically recording the functionality of different systems. At the end of life, a computer arriving at a processing facility could be remotely scanned uh, to test functionality and classified for reuse versus recycling. There are many other possibilities. To sum up, I am concerned that current policy directions around the world may not take us in the direction we want to go. I believe the U.S. should take a leadership role. Here are some suggested directions. One, 
investigate the pros and cons of different landfilling and recycling technologies to establish best practices. Two, promote reuse domestically and abroad. Three, cooperate with the developing world to mitigate the impacts of informal recycling. And four, while the public discourse on electronics and the environment focuses on end-of-life issues, information technology has many important environmental applications which we should not neglect or ignore. So I and my colleagues at Arizona State University would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you.